All right, like the previous demo where I showed you you can jump back and forth between Photoshop and InDesign, I'm gonna show you another trick that goes way back to the earlier days of Quark Express, one of the original page layout design programs that is now kind of on its way of the dinosaurs. Now we're using InDesign. And I wanna show you how to bring in a black and white photo but apply color tints to the photo. So I'm gonna to go to open and in chapter four, folder 12, I'm gonna open this InDesign file and I just have a simple black and white photo. You can see on my links panel, it's a Photoshop file. And what I wanna do is instead of have this being a dull gray kind of black and white photo, I wanna add little tints of color to it. Maybe a little bit of shade of brown, like an old fashioned sepia tone print. Give it a more nostalgic kind of look to it than this dull gray scale. So you'll notice if I click on my black arrow, click on the photo, and I'm on the fill, I'm gonna click this orange and nothing happens to the photo. It can't, it's a black and white photo. Okay, so I'm gonna click on that orange and hit the question mark key. We'll get rid of the color fill. Now when I have my photo selected, I wanna update it. So I'm gonna come right over here to the links panel. There is the chain to relink, but I have nothing to relink this photo to. Okay, I need to make a copy of it. I need to edit this in Photoshop. So remember, like I showed you before, if you click on a photo and it is a Photoshop file, you hold your Option or Alt key and you double click. Okay, there's the photo where it came from in Photoshop. What I'm gonna do now is go to Image Menu and change the mode to grayscale. I'll click Discard, throw away any color information. And then I need to re-save this as a TIFF file. So I'll go to File Menu, Save As. Right down here, okay, I'm on the same folder, folder 12. And I'm gonna come down to the format and change that from doing another Photoshop file to a TIFF file, a grayscale TIFF file. I'll click Save. I use LZW image compression for that. That just goes way back. I don't even know what LZW stands for, but I've always used that and it's been fine. Um, I am working on a Mac here and I'll click OK. Okay, that's it. Just change it to a TIFF file. It has to be grayscale. Now I close Photoshop, click right here to come back to InDesign. And this did not do anything. It is still a gray or yeah, black and white Photoshop file. I need to update that. So now that I have a TIFF file, I can click the re-link button takes me back to the folder. Now I'm just gonna update this black and white photo to this true grayscale TIFF file. And it looks like nothing happened on my screen because the two photos are exactly the same size. If anything, this got a little bit darker because of the TIFF. But now that I have a grayscale TIFF file, I click on it with my black arrow and here's the uh, deal. You gotta think in terms of reverse. What I mean by that is when you have a grayscale TIFF file and you click on it with your black arrow, you are now looking or representing the light parts of the photo, like the color or the skin tone. Dark arrow represents light color. So I'm gonna click on orange. Look at that. Okay, cool. Now I'm gonna click on the white arrow click once on the photo, and now the light or white arrow represents the dark color. So I'll click on brown. And there we go, we've color tinted a photo. Now if that looks too brown, I can adjust the tint or the amount of brown. So we'll slide that back a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna click on my black arrow, click on the outside, then click. And now I'm on the light colors again. Let's do a tint of that. There we go. 
just give it a little bit of a uh, sepia tone. If I click right here in the middle, now I'm on the white arrow representing the dark colors. You can bring that back in a little bit. And you just look for a nice balance between the two tones. And that's how you can create a sepia tone through bringing color through a black and white TIFF file. It's got to be saved as a grayscale. And all of this makes no sense. How can you introduce color if it's a grayscale? Why does the black arrow represent the light color? The white arrow represents the dark color. It's crazy. But once you understand the process, you can get some pretty cool effects. And it doesn't have to be shades of brown or orange. I could click, let's say the dark colors are represented by red. Okay, then I click outside, click on the photo with the black arrow. Now I'm representing the light colors and we'll go yellow. Oh, that doesn't show up too much. Let's go green. Uh, I still did a really, really light tint of that. So I could bring that back up. There we go. You can see the reds and greens or the blues, whatever you want. But you can get a mix of two colors coming through a grayscale TIFF file here in InDesign. Can be some pretty cool effects you can come up with. Old, old trick, but that's how it works. And it's kind of fun to play with every now and then if you really need that effect going. But now you know how to do it.